Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a hyper casual game in Unity and welcome to episode 1. In this series we'll be designing and building a couple of games which could be considered hyper casual. Now I know I have a couple of things on my screen already, uh, we'll get round to that but there are are going to be a few questions that I need to address first because this series is going to be different from pretty much every other series I have done on my channel. The first question is what is a hyper casual game? So a hyper casual game is typically a small but often fun and sometimes challenging game which you can play on a mobile device most of the time. It has a simple premise of tap to play. It's that simple, there's no instructions needed for it, anyone can just pick up their phone, uh, iPad, whatever and just play the game by tapping it's just simple and straightforward so they're often designed to be addictive and typically it, its lifespan can be fairly small but with some careful work it can be greatly expanded so this series is designed with you the viewer in mind and the great thing is you don't need any prior knowledge in unity or programming to get started with this series i will teach you everything from scratch so it is basically going to be for absolute beginners but that doesn't mean to say that it's not for people who've used Unity before and would like to learn more and learn different techniques and see how these things are done. So you'll be taken from a beginner level to probably an intermediate level of learning throughout this series. And if you want to see anything in particular, don't be afraid to comment. We'll also be doing the programming in C Sharp too, um, but that is probably a given in Unity because it's pretty much the only language we can do, unless you're in maybe an old version of Unity. But that's irrelevant. Uh, so finally, this series will work in all versions of Unity, past and present and future, as long as you're using something from at least 2015. Some menus may look a little different if you're using an older version or a newer version, but essentially everything will still function the same. Um, so I am using version 2019.3 and anything before that may look a little different. Anything after may look a little different too. Uh, obviously I can't be too sure because I don't have a crystal ball, but that's, again, irrelevant. So what do we have here? So I'm going to assume that you already have been onto Unity's website and downloaded the Unity Hub or downloaded the engine, whichever. I would go for the Hub and install it from there. So if you have the Unity Hub, you need to go to Installs and then click on Add. And you'll be presented with a couple of different releases. I wouldn't recommend going for any of the pre-releases, the beta versions, especially if you are new to Unity. I would stick to the latest official release, or if you want to, go with either 2017 or 2018. Like I say, it will all function the same. Some things may just look a little different. So all you need to do is install whatever version you want, click next, get it installed. Once you have it installed, you will then be presented with the projects window. Now you can see a couple of projects I already have here. Um, some are in older versions. This is the hyper casual that I have here. Some projects I have, some assets that I have. All you need to do is click on new. And when Unity decides it doesn't want to give us a white screen, we select 3D, name whatever project you want it to be, and then select the location and then click on create. So I'm going to close the hub now because we don't need it. And we have this window. So when your project loads, you will have this whole window. So what are we going to do first? Well, first things first, let's get to grips with Unity. And then probably in the first couple of tutorials, we'll create something cool like um, a ball drop and catch mechanic. Uh, then probably move on to something a bit more advanced and see what we can create from that. Uh, as I said earlier, I, I want to try and create a few different styles of hyper casual games so you can learn more and then pick and choose what you want to go for. So let's go through the engine here. Now, everything here is relevant to what we need. So all these windows we are going to use one way or another. So this is the default layout of Unity and you can stick with it if you want to. I tend to stick with it. Uh, because, again, I aim for beginners, new people to Unity, and this is somewhat familiar to them because that's, this is the first thing they see. So I stick with familiarity, but you don't necessarily have to. So over here, we have the hierarchy. The hierarchy is simply put a list of whatever is contained in text form in the scene view, which is this big window here. So these two items that we can see here are two objects within the scene window. So we can see the camera and we can see the directional light. And you'll notice whenever we click on them, we can highlight them. 
if we press F, we can focus on them. So it brings them into focus. If we click on this directional light, press F on the keyboard, it focuses there. Let's say we click on the directional light here. It doesn't do anything. That's simply because we need to click here to focus. Like so. So the scene view is where we build pretty much everything within the game. Speaking of game, the next tab along up here is indeed game. Now this won't do anything for us at the moment. This is simply put a way of viewing what is occurring in the game. So for example, if we built something and press the play button here, the window will go slightly darker because it would mean that this game view is now active. So if we had a game, we'd be able to play it in the engine this way. Next along, you may have this tab or you may not. We're not going to use it too much at the moment, but it is called animation. We'll get round to that at some later point. If you don't have it, don't worry right now. Over here, we have the inspector panel. The inspector panel contains all the information, statistics about every object that we have in our scene. So if I click on directional light, you'll notice that over here, the only consistent component that we have here is the transform. What is a component? A component is a little section that we could add to any object to tell it what to do. For example, this particular object is a main camera. We have its transform component, which basically means where it is, which way it's facing and how big it is. You can see here by position, rotation and scale. Next one down is the camera component. This camera component is what allows this object to be a camera, i.e. it sees whatever is in the scene. So whatever is in this camera here, whatever it can see down here, is what is projected into the game view. Now a good example of that is if we change the rotation to just point downwards and take a look in the game view, that's all we see. If we do the inverse of that, and all I'm doing here is just hovering my mouse over the letter X on rotation, and if I pan it back up, we should be able to see that the preview matches whatever is in the game view. So to undo, hold control and press Z. And let's reset that back to zero. So position, the middle of the scene is always going to be zero, zero, zero. So that is dead center of any scene. So we'll get a little bit more onto um, how objects work and what they are a little later on in this tutorial. But as I was saying with the camera component, that is allowing it to project whatever we've built into the game view. So down here, we have the project window. The project window is basically where we store all of our assets. What is an asset? An asset can be anything that we bring into our game. For example, it can be a texture. It can be an audio file. It can be a script. It can be a model brought in from Maya or Blender or wherever. So anything that we would use in the game is considered an asset. There are more different types of assets. Uh, things like animations and scenes, but again, we'll go into that kind of thing later on. Just know that down here is where we would store all of our assets before they go into the scene. Next along, we have the console. The console is a great place to check if you have an error within some scripts or something isn't working or you want some debug uh, clarity through your scripts. For example, you've got a print uh, debug, you know through there. Uh, but generally we'll use it if we come across any errors within scripting. Next along is the profiler and top and bottom of this is just basically you can see how everything's performing. Um, it's pretty handy if you're creating really intense games but for what we're going to create I don't think we're going to need the profiler too much. So all these windows are great. They're great in the current format, great in the current position, but what if you want to move them around? test things out. Well, let's move the hierarchy and make it its own little window. Perfect. We could also move it to be next to the inspector. So let's bring it over here. Brilliant. It's next to the inspector. So you can move things around. Let's bring the inspector panel down here. Not too sure about that. It seems a bit mad, if as it were. Uh, let's put the scene view there. So now we've got our game view and our scene view. Nice. So don't be afraid to move these panels around into a position that you are comfortable with. Now, what I will say is because we are going to aim for a mobile device and most people hold their mobile devices, i.e. their phones, 
in portrait mode. So we want to build this in a portrait kind of view. So what I think we should do is have our game view over here, our scene view here, and let's close this to be roughly the same as what we'd expect to see in a phone view. So this is what we would see for our phone screen. Let's bring the inspector panel, uh, let's bring it back here and let's bring the hierarchy here. So I'm going to stick with this layout. And again, you don't have to stick with this layout. The only reason I'm with this layout is because of basically this. I, I like the way this is going to be that represents our phone. So what else is there? You'll notice at the top, there are a multitude of buttons and menus, drop downs. So I'm not going to go through everything because not everything is relevant, especially at this stage in development. However, some of them probably are going to be a bit more useful than others. So first things first, let's go to file and you'll see new scene. A scene is basically what we're in here. So each scene contains its own build of whatever we need it to. Uh, next, we can open a scene. We can save, which is save, obviously. We can save as, we can create a new project. We can open a project, save project. We have build settings as well as build and run and exit. Now, obviously exit is gonna close down Unity. We don't want that. Now these two builds here, the first one, build settings, allows us to view what's going on with the game itself. So at the moment, we can see that our target platform is set as PC, Mac, and Linux, denoted by this little Unity icon next to it. So if you want to aim for a mobile device, let's say let's go for Android, then all you would need to do is click Android and click on Switch Platform. And all this will do is switch the target build of the game to a mobile device. Now it doesn't matter what you build a game in, you can import it to anything you need it to. So if you've accidentally forgotten to change at this point, you can do it later on. And all I will say is that the longer you leave it before you switch your platform, the longer it will take to switch over to that target platform. You can see it's done it pretty quick there. I'm on Android building already. Uh, if you're on Mac and you want to build for uh, an iPhone or something, then you would just have that as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, later on the build, we can always switch back to PC, Mac, and Linux. It doesn't really matter too much. But for now, um, it doesn't matter what you have it as. So that's all good. At the top, we have scenes in build. We're going to have a couple of scenes in this. Um, like I say, a scene is a certain section of each game, say like a main menu, and then the first level, then the second level, or something along those lines. And we would just simply click on add open scenes when we have them. When we click build and run, all that will do is run the game itself in an actual executable. So for example, if we want to test it on PC, we can switch back to PC and build it. So when we play the game, even though we're targeting the Android platform, for example, we're still able to play it within Unity itself because it runs inside the engine, which obviously is really, really good. So, well, Unity. I think the best thing to say about Unity is that it is object oriented, but that doesn't mean to say there isn't just as much coding because there is obviously a lot of code can get quite confusing. So it is always good to keep uh, code um, to a, not to a minimum, but to an acceptable level that you're comfortable with. Um, but we obviously will get into coding as we go along. I don't want to jump straight into something like that. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of other things along here. We've got edit and you would, I expect to see this kind of thing in edit, like settings and preferences and all that. Assets, that's something we will get to. Things like uh, you can import a package if you want to. Now, a package, for example, is the standard assets. That could be something like a first person controller that you can import. Uh, game object, we can create simple game objects this way. Uh, components, they are what relate to the inspector panel over here. Uh, the window, obviously we can get things like the rendering settings, so we can sort out the lighting, uh, the animation window, you know, we can add these things in. Uh, again, that's probably something we will deal with, so don't worry about them too much at this present moment. And obviously a bit of help as well, if you need it. So, what should we do first? Well, we're in Unity, we've got the basics down, we know what each window does, we know what things we can create because we saw them in this game object menu. So let's insert a cube just as our first object. So let's go to game object, 3D object and cube. 
And you'll see here we've created it inside this scene and it's absolutely perfect what's happened because I was going to show you this at the uh, right after inserting the cube. We don't see it here. Why don't we see it here? If we notice over here, the position is minus 3.4, minus 1.8 and minus 4.6. So it's not dead center of the scene. But even if we do place it dead center of the scene by going 0, 0, 0, we still can't see it. We can't see it because the camera is right in the center as well. So it's basically looking through the cube. If we were to move the camera in our scene backwards, we would be able to see the cube. There we go. So like I say, if this were a phone game, you'd see this on your phone screen right now because that is what the camera is rendering. You can see our current position of the camera is minus 3.35. That means everything in front of it looking this way, you can see the projection of the camera with these lines here. That is what it can see. So now we know how the camera works, how we place objects in front of it to view, we can do many more things. So one thing I do want to go into in the edit menu is let's go to, what should we go to? Let's go to something useful, shall we? Let's go to preferences. So although some stuff here is gonna be in 2D, we are still gonna work in a 3D environment. Now, if we go to general, I just want to cover just a couple of things here because uh, it's not too complicated, some of this. Um, it's always worth checking a couple of things down here. Even if you don't change anything here, it's worth just quickly going over and checking a few different things. The colors, you might feel a bit more comfortable changing if you want to customize your experience. Uh, I'm not going to, like I say, I always try and stick with as... Uh, vanilla as possible so people can kind of get to grips with it a bit more. Uh, the external tools is another one I want to touch upon because we're going to be using Visual Studio 2017 in this case. Now it may be a little bit different for you but the programming is going to be exactly the same so you don't need to worry about that too much. Um, I think more than anything just make sure that you do have something selected here and it's not empty because then you may have problem scripting. I should have covered this a couple of minutes ago when we're going through things. But yeah, just make sure you, you do have um, at least something in there. So you can, I, can, I go back to this. You can see there is a lot of different things here which kind of, um, you know, it may look a bit daunting. For example, down here, we've got grid and snap settings. That may look a little bit confusing, but basically all the snap settings are is it allows you to move in certain uh, increments, we could say. So we can see at the moment um, we move 0.25. Uh, so a good example of that is if I select the cube here, and uh, we can see it is set 0, 0, 0. If I hold control and start pulling on the axis, you can see it's moved by 0 0.25. And you can see here, that is the move increment right there. So I always like to keep it either uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.5 or one. So let's have it as 0 0.5 for now. And if we hold control again and pull the cube, you can see that it shifts over here in increments of 0 0.5. So snap settings might be another one to kind of get to grips with a little bit more. So let's reset the camera back to zero. Let's hold control and snap the camera backwards to, let's say, minus two. You could always manually type it as well if you wanted to. Um, I guess it's really up to you. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. You get the settings how you want it to be. So let's explore a couple of these options at the top. By default, we're on this move tool. And all that move tool is, is allows us to move things around the scene allows us to select. Now, a cool little trick is if we, so I've been left clicking the whole time, if we right click and hold the right click, it turns into a little eye and we can pivot around the scene in the spot we're on. Now we're doing that, but you can see nothing changes in this game view. Again, that's because the camera isn't affected by our movement in the scene. Uh, next, we have this hand tool and all that hand tool is if we hold the left mouse, we can just move around the scene. So we can move up, down, left, right. 
At the same time, we can use the arrow keys and just kind of zoom in or move along and the wheel would scroll in, scroll out. So we can move around quite easily using all these different tools. There we go. Now, another awesome way of moving around the scene but retaining our move tool is if we hold the middle button, which is the mouse wheel, we can switch to that hand tool and still have that same effect of movement. So next we have the rotate tool and the rotate tool applies to any object. So in this case, we can move the camera around and you can see the change occurring in the game view as we rotate. And we can rotate on any of the axes. So I'm holding my left mouse button down on those and moving it around. Again, control Z to undo or Z, depending on what you have. Now, a lot of these don't really matter too much. Like the scale tool is not something that we're going to worry about just yet, simply because we're not really designing yet. We're just getting to grips with it. But it basically allows us to do various different things. So, for example, if we go onto our cube, if it lets us, we can switch to the uh, scale tool and you can see here just how it affects it pulling out like that. So we can scale it that way if we want to. It's up to you how you want to do it. The rec tool is a way of changing again like that, but not in the three dimensional way that we were just able to do so quickly and easily. We'll be using the rec tool a little bit more when we come to designing some UI. And then we have a multiple version of it. So we can do various different things all at once. Um, a lot of the other things, again, it's not really necessary at the moment. We may touch upon them later on, but as long as we've got the basics down and we understand what we're doing, then we don't have a problem at all. So what else can we do with this cube? Well, we have multiple options here. So let's change the rotation. Now, different way of changing the rotation, we can either type in a number, so let's say 45. Or, as we did earlier, we can hold down the left mouse button and move along. And we can see the changes occurring in both the scene view and the game view. And this can occur on any anything here. There we go. Uh, we can change the position if we want to. Change the scale if we want to. Simple as that. Or again, we can manually type in everything like so. There we go. So using a transform, uh, people use it different ways. Uh, I guess it kind of depends on how you feel comfortable using it. Um, like I say, it's all about you really. It's, it's not about how I do things. I show you different ways of controlling things and you do whatever is comfortable for you. So if you are a beginner, I recommend playing around with these objects a little more, playing around with transform. Uh, get yourself used to the layout and respective panels and even adjust them to how you'd like them to be, like I have here. Again, it's it's really down to you. So I'm going to get rid of that cube by pressing delete and it's gone completely. So as I did say earlier, we might do like a ball drop and catch thing. So let's go to game object. Let's go to 3D object and create a sphere. So this can be our ball. So now let's get it dead center of our scene by going zero, zero, zero. So what I'd like to do is have these balls fall and we have to try and catch them. Uh, and obviously we get a score from that and we do whatever else. So I think uh, next tutorial we're going to work with some colouring to our game. So we'll add things like materials and show how they can change and how you can change the visuals of a game just by manipulating a material. Now obviously I'll get into more what a material is in the next uh, tutorial. So, uh, did I say the right words? The material next tutorial. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so finally, let's save our scene. So let's just can hold control, press S. And what does that do? That saves the scene right there. Now, when you start up Unity, you'll be in a sample scene, as it says up here, which is all good and well. And this is now an asset. We could always file and save as and save our scene as something else if you want to. Uh, but we'll probably end up renaming the scene anyway. So, uh, most of the time, I think, hyper-casual games are simplistic, but that doesn't mean you can't make it look more realistic, I guess, or pretty, and I think that's maybe where materials do come into it. So, until that next tutorial, guys, don't forget, click subscribe, 
click the bell icon to stay up to date with this series and indeed everything else on my channel and I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.